Hello everyone and welcome to Windows Forensics here at Pentester Academy. Some of you may have gone through our Linux Forensics course, which was notable as one of the most comprehensive courses around that used free and or open source tools. So we have a new course for you. I'm very excited to be able to be your instructor for this course. Now, those of you that don't know me, a little bit about me. You may have seen me around. If you go to any conferences, I tend to go to a lot. I tend to speak at a few. I've spoken at DEF CON six times in the last four years, for example. I've done some repeat performances at places like Black Hat, GERCON, 44CON, B-Sides, Forensicure, etc. So I've been known to speak at a conference or two. Also been known to write some books. I wrote a book called Hacking and Penetration Testing with Low Power Devices. And this is a book that tells you how you can build your own low powered hacking devices that you can plant around your target and hack them remotely. We also wrote a book called Linux Forensics that was the first book published by Pentester Academy. I've also written another book on USB forensics. At my day job, I'm a digital forensics professor at Bloomsburg University of Pennsylvania. I've been programming since I was eight years old, in assembly since I was 10, and hacking hardware since I was 12. I'm also an aviator and plane builder. I have a dozen ratings, a couple thousand hours of flight time, and have built planes and done other fun things with aviation. So let's talk about this course. This course should have a lot of fun stuff. We're going to start out talking about live response. So we will talk about human interactions. How do you interact with the people involved in your incident response? We're going to talk about how you can create a live response kit. How you can minimize disturbance to your subject system by transporting data across the network. We'll talk about collecting volatile data of different types, and we'll decide whether or not it's justified to perform a traditional dead analysis. We will also talk about dumping RAM if you want to use some of the new exciting tools like volatility. We will talk about acquiring file system images. The traditional file system analysis is still the most powerful. It's very mature. It's something that we've been doing for decades. So we pretty much have figured out how to do this. So we'll talk about tools such as DD, DCFLDD, DC3DD, etc. And we'll talk about things like write blocking using software based write blockers and hardware based write blockers. We will talk about analyzing file systems. How can you mount images? How do you find the strange? You don't want to look at just the normal stuff. There's so much data today that you need to find the strange stuff. We'll talk about some searching tools that can help you with that. We'll talk about authentication related files. We'll show you how you can recover deleted files and how you can find hidden information. We will show you how you can do all of these things using open source and free software such as the sleuth kit and autopsy how you can get volume information file system information we're going to dig deep into fat file systems and ntfs file systems directory entries show you how you can construct timelines we'll spend a bit of time on timeline analysis so you can see things like when the system was installed, upgraded, booted. Are there any newly created files that might be related to malware? Are there any changed files, maybe some Trojans that have been installed? Are there files in the wrong place? Has someone been trying to exfiltrate some data from your system? And we're going to dig pretty deep, just as we did with the Linux forensics course. We're going to show you everything you could ever want to know about FAT, and NTFS. So this will allow you to find even the more advanced attackers because you know everything there is to know about these file systems. We'll also show you how you can search unallocated space on your media. We will delve into network forensics. 
how can you use snort on some pocket captures things like tcp stat how do you separate conversations with tcp flow how can you trace backdoor traffic also with tcp flow these are some of the things we'll talk about we will talk about file forensics understanding file signatures so that you can find files that have the wrong extensions which is a easy way to hide information in Windows because of how it works. We'll talk about finding things in swap space, how you can reconstruct someone's web browsing history, their cookies, browser caches, etc. How can you deal with unknown files? You can look at hash databases and see if it's a known bad file. We can also use things like the file command and strings command. We will look at log files. We will look at the recycle bin and show you how you can get files back from there. We will talk about something called prefetch files, which also can provide information. We will talk about alternate data streams, which are something specific to NTFS. Other things we'll talk about. We'll talk a lot about the Windows Registry. The Windows Registry is rich with information for the forensics investigator. We will use some tools such as Reg Ripper. We'll also talk about Python and we'll see how we can get system information out of the registry. How can we get some of these auto start programs? We'll find that there are a lot of places that you can put things in the registry in order to auto start something. We will talk about USB devices and all of the information pertinent to these that is stored in the registry. We'll talk about user information that is stored in the registry. Past and present mounted devices, user activity, system restore points. We will spend a lot of time on the registry because it does provide an awful lot of information to the examiner. We will talk about memory forensics. We will use tools such as volatility to retrieve process information, look at various Windows objects, search for malware, look into event logs. They're not just stored on the disk. There's also information to be gleaned from memory. We'll look at the registry in memory. We'll look at how we can reconstruct some network artifacts, looking at Windows services, the Windows graphical user interface. We will look at file systems information in memory. We will look at ways of detecting kernel rootkits in memory. And we will look at creating timelines based on information stored in memory. We will also look at reversing Windows malware. So we will look in depth at Windows executables, including looking at the headers, imports, exports, Windows resources, some obfuscation techniques, dynamic linking issues, and we'll do a little bit of command line analysis. We will also talk about how you can carefully run malware inside of a virtual machine, of course, while you capture some traffic and you leverage various debuggers. We will even talk about what do you do when it's all done? It's not done until all the reports have been written. So we'll talk about using tools such as Autopsy, Dratus, and Open Office in order to lessen the pain of writing reports. So what are our overall goals here? We're going to leverage open source or at least free software as much as we can. We're going to go for completely open source stuff. Occasionally we will find some useful software that is at least free. We're going to get very hands-on and practical with our exercise and our demos throughout. We're going to be hands-on at the same time we're also going to be very technical. So we're going to dive deep into things like the file systems that you find on Windows, into the registry, etc. So we're not going to emphasize any particular tool, certainly not any super expensive commercial tools that might run you over $10,000. We're going to show you how you can do some thorough Windows forensics using free software. And of course, one of our other goals overall is we want to provide you with the most 
comprehensive Windows Forensics course available. So hopefully you will set off on this journey with me and I'm very much looking forward to this and we will see you soon in our next video.